So guys, today I'm just going to talk about wood ash. Anyone who's got an open fire would be dealing with this quite a bit, so I'll often, after a few weeks of having fires going throughout the winter, um, I'll have to scoop out the ash that's sitting in the fireplace. Um, now, there's a few things you can do with it. You can either just spread it on your garden raw, or you can throw it in the bin, or you can do whatever, but um, I find it's really useful to extract out of the ash the potash, so the potassium. Potassium is one of your major fertilizers. Uh, so potassium, nitrogen, phosphorus, um, magnesium, all of these main um, minerals that plants need to grow. So potassium is a really soluble one. So what we do here is we just chuck the ash into a bucket, add some water and start stirring it around. You probably want to have a pair of glasses on when you're doing this. This is quite alkaline, it's quite caustic. What we're making here is called pot ash lye. And this is a traditional way of making lye. Lye is just potassium hydroxide. Um, what we're going to do with it, what I usually do with it, is use it as a liquid fertilizer for plants, for, for potassium. Um, what you can also do with it is make soap if you add it to a, a, an oil or a fat and then um, and, and heat it up on a saucepan and keep stirring it, you can make soap out of it if you wanted to, like a wood ash soap. So potassium gets its name literally from pot ash. Uh, it's the ash that's in the bottom of the pot. So it's ash is pretty much the mineral content of plants. When you burn a log, when you burn plant material, anything that isn't flammable, like anything that isn't carbon, is mineral based. And a small percentage of the tree is that. So what you're left with is all of the mineral content of the soil that that plant has drawn up and it's held in the plant's cells. Uh, and you, So it's very rich, and it's particularly rich in potassium. So it's a great source of that. You've got to be very careful though with potassium because potassium is very soluble. So if you get some ash in you and it rains, the potassium will leach out of the ash pretty quickly. So you've got to be careful to keep a cover on it. So here's one I've prepared earlier. Um, I've also got a little bucket there with some clay that I've been uh, purifying. That's off the point. So you see this tea coloured brown liquid. So that's our potassium rich liquid. That's our potash lye. And that's been sitting there with a the cover over it, the big metal cover. And the reason I have the cover on is to stop any rain getting in because I don't want that getting washed out. So I've added some water, let it sit a bit, and this is what our fresh batch of pot ash mixture looks like. So I'm just going to stir that up with a stick, make sure that's all well and truly soaked in. And it's a matter of just, you've got to keep adding a bit more water. That ash is very fine grained, so it'll tend to soak up the water quite quickly. And just chuck a cover on, like that. And what that stops is any rain getting in there, so we don't want to be diluting it any more than that. Unless we have to. We don't want it washing out. If it overflows, you're going to lose our potassium. So what I'm going to do here is just um, show you how I've strained off some before. So an earlier bucket we had there, it's poured it through a sieve. Um, so it's just that a bucket with holes in the bottom. So I've just punched some holes in the bottom of a bucket. And I use this as a sieve, like a strainer. So what we want is all that liquid. So we've mixed the ash and the liquid. We've let it sit, as you can see, for a few weeks. So we're going to pour that through that bucket with the sieve uh, bottom. And, and all of that liquid is going to drain through and we're left with the wood ash depleted of potassium or re relatively depleted in potassium and then we'll be collecting that l liquid at the bottom which will be our potash lye and uh, you can use this for many things you can just put it in a bottle I generally bottle it and use it around the garden as a liquid fertilizer but you can also use it to make soap so it depends on what you want to do but I think it's a great way of evaluating with ash I just tend to add the ash after leftovers to the compost
So this is the final product from the wood ash lye. This is concentrated wood ash lye, so it's very alkaline. And if I just tip it across like that, you can see in there the crystals, the potassium hydroxide. They've actually crystallized out with such a rich solution. You can see that. That's pretty good. I think that's probably about 20 kilos of ash. And this is the concentrated potassium hydroxide out of that. Not really showing it that well, but it looks like a it looks like ice basically. It looks like crystals of ice. Now this can be used to make soap, or you can use it to make pottery glazes, or you can use it for lots of things. It's a very useful thing. It just comes out of firewood, so you probably say maybe four tons of wood can generate that much pure potassium hydroxide or whatever you want to use it for. Anyway, cool little experiment.